Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the advantages and disadvantages of stainless steel, silver plated and sterling silver cutlery as part of my viewer comment response series where I respond to a comment made by a viewer against one of my videos. I'm Anesu Sagonda and I produce educational luxury content for anyone after the finer things, whether you're new to money and wanting to learn how to navigate the terrain, or you're young and starting out in life and wanting to reap the benefits of buying better quality from the get-go, or you're into luxury but you want to focus more on higher quality, under the radar brands, then my content is geared towards you. I'm incredibly mindful of the fact that I have a fairly diverse audience, but it's heavier on the younger consumers. And over the last five years or so, I've seen an absolute explosion of brands online, whether they sell through social media or they have a website across all luxury products. And when I look at some of the marketing material, it can be quite gimmicky. And some of it is so far fetched. I just think this is not believable. Why would you say something like this? But unless you're none the wiser, you'll typically be taken in by the material and you'll buy the products. And then, of course, telltale signs are wear and tear where you'll start to see issues. And particularly when you look at uh, cutlery, you may find it'll start to tarnish, it'll peel, it'll crack, it starts to rust, for example. And I thought to myself, I have a duty of care. I feel I have a duty of care towards my viewers because I will never know all the brands uh, I'll never be able to recommend all the good brands and nor do I aspire to knowing all the brands. But what I do aspire to is equipping my viewers with the right information in order to make an informed purchasing decision. It's really important to honor my ethos, hashtag buy better, buy less. And so I thought I have already spoken about cutlery. I'm going to attach the video above and I, I noted I gave some basics you need to consider when looking at stainless steel and silver plated, for example. And then I thought, let me pad it out a bit more so that when you're looking at other brands that I haven't mentioned, you will know what to consider and therefore you make the right uh, purchasing decision the first time around and you don't need to replace the cutlery. Looking at stainless steel, stainless steel, the base material is made up of iron and carbon. And then brands will add varying quantities of chromium and nickel to give um, durability to the stainless steel to um, get around rusting to, to ensure that it doesn't rust and also to give the shine to the cutlery. And you'll see noted on the cutlery um, 1810, 180, um, 188, you'll see different quantities being listed. And that's typically the percentage of nickel to chromium. So for example, 188 um, is 18% nickel, 8% chromium. What I have found is the sweet spot from experience, what I have bought, I've only ever had uh, stainless steel. My first collection was from Granwag. I'm going to include the link down below. And I'm currently using cutlery from an Italian brand called Alessi, 1810, and I think the range is called Nuovo. I'll include the link down below as well. I've had no issues with both. I gave the first one away. It was my university one after many, many years. And not because there was anything wrong with it. I just wanted to try something new. The Alessi I now have is fantastic. It's been in use for five years. I like the weight. It's fairly weighted cutlery um, and it's just wearing beautifully. And I could never imagine not having it. It's just such an addition. It, it goes well with the dinnerware and everything else. But because I'm always coming across other brands, the temptation to try silver plated and sterling silver is really creeping in. And I think uh, I may lose that battle. And I've been umming and ahhing and thinking, maybe what I should do is buy silver plated or sterling silver, a few pieces to use every day with my family. And then when we have guests, switch to the stainless steel because it's still fantastic, I like it. I don't see any reason to replace it. So that's something I'm umming and ahhing over at the moment. So when it comes to stainless steel, please only ever consider, I will only ever recommend 1810 stainless steel cutlery. With silver plated, um, depending on where you, which brand you're buying from, the ones I will recommend will typically have the initials uh, on their marketing material or when you're talking to the salesperson, EPNS. And that stands for Electro 
plated uh, nickel silver. Various materials can be used as the base material uh, for the cutlery and then it's um, plated with the uh, sterling silver. You can use stainless steel that has the carbon and iron. You can use brass, for example. Brand, there are brands I recommend that use brass, but for their silverware, think of trays, teapots, and so forth. Um, but what I would, would always recommend is nickel. Please ensure whatever you buy, the base material is nickel. And that's really important because nickel ensures that there's a really good bond between the cutlery that's being plated and the sterling silver that's being put on top. It, it just ensures a very good bond. And nickel is a lot better at getting definition when it comes to the designs and the detail that really comes up on nickel, um, especially when you compare it to stainless steel, for example. Nickel all the way when it comes to electroplating. The other thing to consider when it comes to silver plating is that they will talk about the thickness of the actual plating. That is very important. And different products um, are plated with, uh, uh, with cutlery specifically. The thickness, the minimum I would recommend is, the minimum is 20 microns. That's the measurement, microns, and it's 20 the minimum. Certain brands, for example, cars that I've spoken about in uh, my previous cutlery video, uh, a British brand, and they're a fantastic brand because they actually produce cutlery for pretty much all the cutlery brands. They produce the blanks and then the different brands will then carve out their own designs, for example. Theirs is 20 microns, the thickness of the silver plating. Uh, there's a British brand I'll talk about in the future called David Meller, and they are focused on 35 microns. So that's even thicker. It's, um, I would say, uh, a lot more durable. You'll get a lot more mileage from that. Anything between 20 and 35, I recommend. Another brand that also produces uh, silver plating that's plated to 35 microns is Italian brand uh, Greggio. I like Greggio, and 35 is what restaurants would be focused on. They would go for cutlery, that's around 35 microns. For the domestic environment, 20 is more than enough. If you go below that, then it's not as durable. You're not going to get the mileage, the longevity from the cutlery, because although it's cheaper, um, the plating is not going to last. It's not going to be as good quality as anything between 20 and 35 microns. What you will also find where the gimmicky stuff starts coming in is where brands say it's double plated. Please get a figure because double plated could mean it could be one, two, three, four, five microns. And then you double that. That's only 10 microns. Please be mindful of that. Or you will get brands who will talk of huge quantities, 50, 60 microns. That's a lot and it's going to be expensive. You may as well spill over into buying sterling silver cutlery when you consider the price of 60 microns of silver plating. And then the top is sterling silver. With sterling silver, uh, it's essentially 92.5% uh, sterling silver that's in the cutlery. And then the balance, 7.5%, uh, is copper. And you need copper in sterling silver cutlery to give uh, the hardness, the durability to the sterling silver. I have come across brands that say, oh, it's pure sterling silver with nothing else. That is very gimmicky. Pure sterling silver is not going to be durable. It is going to be brittle. It's going to break. It's not going to last. Please ensure um, it's 92.5 and then the balance is going to be copper. I have come across uh, uh, Puifo card that I've recommended in my last uh, video. They use 93.5% uh, sterling silver, which to me is a little bit gimmicky because I don't think it's, it's necessary. Um, but I guess that's their own um, unique selling point. And then the balance, the 6.5%, is made up of copper and other material, which is unique to them, their secret source, which ensures uh, the longevity, the high quality of the cutlery. Advantages and disadvantages. Well, starting with stainless steel, it's the cheapest, the cheaper of the three materials that I'm going to be talking about in this video. So in terms of price points, it's the cheapest. Um, and what you'll find is stainless steel, there is a huge selection of brands. There are considerably more brands that produce stainless steel cutlery in comparison to silver plated and sterling silver. They dramatically decrease as you go up. But with sterling silver, a lot more mass focused. So you have more brands, more variety at a much more affordable price point. Regardless of your taste and budget, you will find something you like when it comes to stainless steel cutlery. Moving up to silver plated. In the past, silver plated has had a bit of a bad reputation in that 
there's been the negative association that oh you can't afford sterling silver so you go for silver plated a bit like cubic zirconia versus diamonds or lab grown diamonds versus diamonds now um, but when it comes to the weight and the look of sterling silver and silver plated it's exactly the same there is absolutely no difference the price when it comes to silver plated cutlery it's taken up by manufacturing costs that's where the expense the biggest expense is versus the material you're paying for very little uh, sterling silver with sterling silver the price is all about the sterling silver uh, the price of sterling silver has gone up dramatically over the last i would say 10 15 years i remember hearing of prices of about a hundred dollars a kilogram and, and now you're looking at prices of around a thousand dollars a kilogram for sterling silver so you have to decide um, what's important to you paying uh, a massive premium for sterling silver versus silver plated where you're still getting the same weight and look as sterling silver but at a fraction of the price just to give you um, an example based on practical terms looking at brands cars that I've spoken about they charge the same price uh, regardless of the style uh, for their silver plated and also their sterling silver uh, all of their uh, silver plated pieces are 73 pounds per piece versus sterling silver which is 400 pounds per piece uh, David Miller a family-run small business brand that I'm going to be talking about in the future they sell based per piece but they also sell sets of six where you have uh, two forks, two knives, two spoons for both the stainless steel, uh, you have um, silver plated and also uh, sterling silver. Just to give you an example, um, stainless steel, the six pieces, you're paying a price of about £125. Uh, silver plated, you're looking at a price of about £185 for the set of six. And then for the sterling silver, you're looking at a price of about £980. Uh, for the set of six and that's for a style called pride and then of course you have audio right at the top and they only produce cutlery in sterling silver and then they do have a few ranges where they've added gold and what you'll find is the typical starting price depending of course on the design is a price of about 800 euros per piece so you have to decide what's important to you um, silver plated versus sterling silver it's all about the price you're still getting the same look the same weight and functionality at a fraction of the price from a uh, silver plated also worth bearing in mind i know uh, the older generation will typically save uh, their best dinnerware cutlery and so forth for when they have visitors but if you have silver plated sterling silver i always say use it enjoy it tomorrow's not promised and using beautiful pieces significantly raises your entire dining experience with both silver plated and sterling silver the more you use it the less it will tarnish if you're not using it it will not tarnish but it's also worth noting that silver plated tarnishes just a little less than sterling silver but using it means it doesn't tarnish if it does tarnish um, there are chemical solutions that are either sold with the cutlery or you can buy from the supermarket where you wipe off uh, the, the oxidation, where the oxidation has occurred, but you don't get any permanent or, or lasting damage to your cutlery at all. So with uh, stainless steel, uh, silver plated, sterling silver, it's all about the price. If you're price sensitive, as you go up in terms of the quality of the material, so does the price go up, but you still get the same functionality of sterling silver at a fraction of the price uh, from uh, silver plated. And of course, silver plated tarnishes a little less than uh, sterling silver, but you need to keep using it. Don't save it for special occasions. You've spent a lot, enjoy it.